Hey guys, welcome to another Species Spotlight. Today we're going to be looking at the glass catfish or the Cretopterus petrolis. Uh, this is an interesting species of completely transparent fish, in fact, that originates from Thailand. Now, it's found in rivers with, throughout the river basins on the coast of Thailand, um, various drainage basins, for example, that come off a mountainous area as well and it inhabits typically the water habitats that it inhabits are slower moving to stagnant type turbid water environments it's not like they come from fast moving waters it really is a slow moving type of uh, environment now we're going to go through the uh, rest of the species spotlight video by looking at the behavior compatibility tank size you know size of the fish and then a little bit about water conditions feeding and then a quick summary at the end so moving on, uh, looking at the behavior of the fish, it's very peaceful. Uh, typical tank mates that you would want to keep with something like a glass catfish or things like smaller to mid-sized schooling rasboras. Uh, even the mid to smaller sized tetras make good tank mates. Uh, small types of loaches, for example, smaller peaceful to mid-sized peaceful anabantoids are another good group of fish that you could pair up in a community tank with things like a school of uh, glass catfish. Now you want to make sure that the tank uh, mates are peaceful. These truly are peaceful fish. They get stir pretty easily. And uh, it's important that you, uh, you know, put anything in there that's too boisterous or active. Uh, these fish get about uh, two and a half to three inches long, uh, which is approximately 5.5 uh, .5 to 7.5 centimeters. Uh, they're totally transparent in nature, uh, in, in coloration and body coloration. You want to make sure that um, you keep them in groups of at least six fish and the minimum tank size for doing something like that based on their maximum uh, you know size range of two and a half to three potentially 3.5 inches is about 30 gallons like a 30 gallon long is a good idea for these fish 36 inches so that a school of them can move about in a normal fashion. Now the type of tank setup that you want to maintain for them is uh, a natural type of structure like uh, Malaysian driftwood for example, a nice stack of it with a lot of anubias or microsorum growing on it. Lighting level should be low to mid-level light level type uh, entering the aquarium. That amount of light, you don't want anything too bright. Um, also the water movement in the tank should be kept like as I mentioned where they come from are slow moving to uh, you know slower moving types of water you want to make sure that it's uh, not an aggressive filter output keep it keep it a gentle movement of water as well when you're setting up the uh, tank for these uh, fish make sure that the planting is pretty dense in the aquarium they do like to feel uh, secure by sometimes going into the plants, staying there for a while and they come out. Uh, it is a fish that likes to be a little bit recluse at times, so you need to respect that. So remember, at least groups of six. Otherwise, uh, if you try and keep one or two of them, generally uh, they aren't going to survive. They really do need a, uh, a group of their own species to uh, feel comfortable with and, and, uh, and do well with over the long term. Now, water conditions, these fish come from softer, more acidic water conditions, like a DKH range of about two to six uh, is, is normal of DKH. Uh, so typical water conditions in an aquarium, four to six DKH should, should satisfy them. You want to maintain them on the acidic range, uh, high fives, maybe six to seven, somewhere in there. They do come from acidic water, so it's important to really uh, give them that type of pH if you want them to do well over the long term. Temperature range can go from about 75 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, water current, diffuse, not direct strong currents. And uh, another thing that's important uh, to consider with these fish is, is also the fact that they're really not, um, you know, not very tolerant of, uh, of brand new water in a tank. What I mean is uh, you want to have some, you want to have an aquarium that's aged and well established. Uh, they do a lot better when being introduced into an aquarium of that, of that nature. Not, not a good fish to pick as a starter fish if you're going to start off a new tank. I would avoid them in that kind of case. Uh, in terms of water quality, it should be top notch for them. Regular small water changes is the best way to go. When it comes to feeding, they're really pretty easy to deal with. It's a micro, consider kind of a micro predator. They like to feed on um, 
uh, you know, smaller bits of food as they slowly sink through the water column. So, uh, and they adapt well once they're acclimated to your uh, aquarium. They, they adapt well to various foods, uh, flakes, smaller granules, smaller chopped up frozen foods, shrimp, krill, bloodworms, they do well on all of those things. Uh, in fact, fluval bug bites is a great choice for them. Uh, why? Because it's a smaller granule, you can get it in a small granular format, slowly th sinks through the water column and they will adapt to that kind of food. It's a good nutrition of them based on insect pr protein, it makes a lot of sense for them. So in summary, uh, the glass catfish is really a great community fish that you want to consider when you're keeping them with uh, a variety of other small peaceful fish. Uh, as I mentioned, tetras and avantoids uh, make great additions uh, in a tank uh, when you want, to you want to maintain a tank featuring a nice school of glass catfish. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Make, make sure to subscribe, comment, and leave us a like. Till the next time.